hello everyone <clears throat> so we had started the practice session in the previous week and now we'll look at step one of exercise one so as we discussed earlier that we'll taking up two exercises the first exercise is observing the self by the self that is observing the consciousness by the consciousness and the second exercise would be observing the body and the interaction between self and body by the self and that would mean observing the material by the consciousness so we'll take up exercise one today and we'll look at step one of exercise one so today we'll look at step one of exercise one and as we told earlier that we are doing these exercises for developing ourselves and in this process we are going to awaken to the higher activities of the self that is to say we are going to develop right understanding at the same time it will lead to purification of our accumulated feelings and thoughts which make our sanskar so these are the seven steps that are included in exercise one and we are going to look at step one of this exercise so step one is that i have to be aware of the self i have to be aware of the imagination and observe it so i that is the consciousness that is the self i am observing myself so i am the seer and i am the seen so you have to be aware of yourself and a simple way to be aware of yourself is to be aware of your imagination so i am observing my imagination at this moment and that is to say that i am observing my desire thought and expectation at this moment so as we have discussed earlier also that imagination comprises of our desire thought and imagination and i have to be aware of all that is there in my own activities of imagination so to begin with you may try and observe your thoughts if you are not able to see your desire feeling directly so it may be the case that you are not able to observe your feeling directly so what you can do you can start by observing your thought so you can observe your thoughts at this moment observe the thoughts going on within you at this moment of time just as they are without evaluating them without reacting to them without trying to stop them without trying to change them so you just have to be aware isn't it uh you generally find that when you try to be aware of your thoughts and the thoughts are not very pleasant so you may feel like getting away of from the thought or you will feel like changing the thought or you will feel like imposing some thought in your imagination or something similar to this but there is no need to change your thought or react to your thought or evaluate your thought at this stage you just have to be aware of your thought so if you are not able to be aware of your complete thought there also you can do one thing that you can just start by marking the object of attention in your thought so maybe your thought goes to your family member some family member and from there the thought goes to some incident that took place some time back from there your thought goes to your friend now from here the thought goes to some incident that happened with your friend and from here you start remembering some city and from there the thought goes to some other thing and so on and so forth so you see that our thoughts keep on migrating so you are here initially then here from here you go to some other thought some other thought some other thought and then it may be the case that you come back to that same thought from here you move to some other thought and so on so this is also something that you can do to begin with you start marking the object of your imagination the content of your thought briefly the object of your attention and from there you can look at the thought that is going on inside you isn't it so this is something that you can start by doing you see that this is a very simple but very important step simple because you have to observe your own self you are thinking the thought is there in you and you just have to observe your thought and you don't need any instrument in the process not even the body isn't it so you can keep your body in a comfortable position you don't even need to use your eyes you just have to observe your thoughts the only thing that may retard is you are not able to assign the priority to observation of your thought so that is where you will have to work upon so it is a very simple thing but very important step why important because all your happiness and unhappiness is here in your imagination and it may be the case that you are not able to recollect all that you observed during your this process of observation so you can keep a journal there and keep on pointing out 
or keep on marking so you can keep a journal there and keep on marking your thoughts isn't it and you may also make this kind of line diagram so that will also help you uh, make out for yourself what you are thinking about so you can start by observing your thought but gradually you have to observe your feeling and from there you have to observe your complete imagination so you'll see that your desires that is your feeling guide your thoughts and your thoughts guide your expectation so to a large extent when we try to pay attention to our imagination we are able to observe our thought but it takes time to observe the feeling because the feeling may be somewhat more subtle that you are not able to observe to begin with so in step 1 in part b you can try and observe your imagination here try and observe the desire thought and expectation that is your complete imagination here and particularly try to focus on your feeling so maybe with some practice with some effort now you are able to make out your feeling if you find out that you are not able to see the feeling then you may also try to find out how you are relating to the particular reality that you are thinking about maybe your friend so how were you trying to relate to your friend was there a feeling of relationship or a position so this is also you can make out your feeling so gradually you have to come to the stage when you are able to observe your feeling your desire and then you are also able to observe your thought and expectation and particularly you have to be aware of your feeling so observe the imagination going on within you at this moment of time just as it is without evaluating it without reacting to it without trying to stop it or change it or impose something isn't it what do you think is it doable so if you are not able to do this to begin with start by observing your object of attention from there you can observe your thought and from there you can make out your feeling you can deduce the feeling that was motivating this particular thought and you have to start by observing for some time and then maybe you are able to continue it throughout the day so you can also do one thing that you can make small sets of 10 to 15 minutes to begin with observe your desire thought and expectation note that down and then look at it and try to make out what the feeling was there how you analyzed the particular situation what was your expectation in that particular situation you can do this also and you can do this multiple times in a day so and that will gradually add to your competence of observing your own imagination so it is a simple step but very important step simple because the imagination is anyway going on continuously and in you only isn't it and the capacity to pay attention and observe is something inherent in you you just have to take the decision to pay attention and observe and keep on observing so it's only a matter of deciding now if you are able to assign the priority to your observation of your own imagination then you are able to do it so it's only your decision that will help you take a note of your imagination your thought your feeling your desire and this is important because your happiness unhappiness at this moment depends on your feeling thought at this moment now as you said that the basic aspiration of a human being is continuity of happiness and all my happiness or unhappiness is there in my imagination if there is contradiction in the thoughts i feel unhappy if there is harmony in the thoughts i feel happy if the feelings are naturally acceptable to me i feel happy if the feelings are not acceptable to me naturally i feel unhappy so you'll see that since all your happiness or unhappiness is there in your imagination and your basic aspiration is to be happy and that also in continuity you can see how much important it is to be aware of your thought to be aware of your feeling to be aware of your imagination if you are able to see this then you will be able to assign the priority to this observation of your imagination and then move forward now we'll look at some common problems that people have reported while observing the imagination so one kind of problem is that you start observing through the body right and as you said earlier that there is no need of the body while observing your imagination because you are the seer and the imagination is there in you only so even no need to take the help of the body but since we are accustomed to look at the world outside through the body we try to look at the world inside that is your imagination also through the body so it is possible that i am seeing the self directly and not through sensation so we are generally used to seeing the world outside we are generally used to observe 
the world outside using the five senses of sound, touch, form, taste, and smell. So we may even try to see the self also through the senses, and we may try to see its shape or color or something like that. So since we are used to look at the physiochemical objects outside which have a color, so maybe we also try to look at the color of the self, isn't it? So we try to look at the self just like any physiochemical entity, and that is not going to happen. because the self is not physiochemical it is a conscious entity but you have to again find it out for yourself by your direct observation so once it is clear to you that i don't require even the body to observe my imagination so that tendency to observe through the body will be taken care of so keep observing even this that you are trying to see the shape or color of the self so the self may have a shape okay may have a size but it's not that you are able to observe it to begin with isn't it so try to observe it try to observe the imagination and from there you are able to see it more clearly so i am seeing the self directly by observing the imagination going on in the self at this moment and not through the body so this is one conclusion that you can draw from this discussion i hope you are able to see this the second problem that one can feel is that you are able to see the thought but not able to see the feeling so for the time being you can observe the thought and then deduce the feeling from that particular thought let's say in your imagination you are arguing with somebody isn't it and you might be arguing for minutes together hours together okay struggling within yourself with the other person and it may be the case that you are not able to come out of it keep on doing this time and again but if you just pause for a moment and think that why you were arguing with the other was there a feeling of opposition there or relationship there and you can easily see that there was a feeling of opposition there that's why you were arguing and the argument was getting more and more heated up in your own imagination does it happen with you or not what do you think does it happen it might happen so many times isn't it so if you start observing the thought and if you analyze it a bit then you can also find out the feeling there for example if you have the thought of competing with the other then of course there is some opposition involved there you have the thought of nurturing the other there is some feeling of affection or care here you are thinking of taking revenge from the other then there is some opposition involved there isn't it there is a feeling of opposition you are feeling grateful for the other then of course there is a feeling of relationship here so this way you can make out this way you can conclude you can deduce what is the feeling that is guiding your thought isn't it but finally you have to develop the capacity to observe the feeling directly so when you are deducing also you are trying to observe the feeling through analysis of your thought so that is one way to go forward gradually you need to be able to observe your feeling directly isn't it the other problem that is reported is that my imagination seems to be going on only sometimes and not all the time this is one another common issue that has been reported that when you try to observe your imagination it appears to be temporary as if sometimes it is going on sometimes it is not going on and we have proposed in our lectures and workshop that the imagination is going on continuously so it appears to be contradicting isn't it so basically you have to keep checking to see if the imagination is going on only sometimes or if it is going on all the time but you are able to observe it only sometimes so is it so that the imagination is going on only for some time or you are able to observe it only sometime what do you think what is correct so try to observe this again and we'll see that it's not that imagination is going on only for some moments of time rather it is going on every moment but you are not able to pay attention to your imagination another problem that is reported is that when i try to observe my imagination i get tired i feel sleepy and what is that so if you are trying to force yourself to observe your imagination you may feel tired or exhausted on the other hand when you are not alert you may even lose track of your focus and again drift into sleep so you need to be neither too tense and forceful not too casual to lose your attention your attentiveness so do the exercise while being relaxed yet being alert so you have to be relaxed but alert isn't it so 
as you said earlier that you don't have to impose anything in your imagination similarly you don't have to force yourself to observe your imagination when try to force it may also have some adverse effect on your body on your head so no need to force just be relaxed and be observant something that is there in you will of course be vivid to you clear to you you will be able to see that isn't it only that you have to decide to see it so no need to force anything upon you just be relaxed and observe it and it may also be the case that you get drifted in your thoughts sometime and then even forget that you are observing your thoughts and you may come back minutes later okay maybe hours later also so if you are able to see that no i am here to observe my imagination so you will be able to again come back to your state of observing the imagination and you will not lose your attentiveness also isn't it so you don't have to be casual so neither you have to apply any force upon yourself nor be casual so you have to relax still being alert isn't it when you say the attention goes elsewhere where does it go you said imagination is there all the time so what do you mean when you say get back get back from where so people say that i am able to pay attention but my attention go keeps on going here and there so where does it go can we make it out and if imagination is going on all the time then what is the meaning of coming back to the imagination okay getting back from where so two different things are going on inside you one is the imagination that is going on continuously in the b2 block and second thing is your observation of the imagination and you we'll see that you are able to observe the imagination precisely through block b1 that is the dimension of knowing that is the higher activities of the self so when you temporarily stop observing that is lose your awareness that is when your imagination goes on without your noticing or being aware of it imagination might even move on to another topic for example imagination is like a flowing stream of thoughts or desires when you are observing this imagination as if standing by the side of your stream you are clearly able to see it that is you are able to observe from b1 but when you jump into the stream that you start flowing with the imagination you are no longer able to observe it rather you start flowing with the imagination and mostly it is about the world outside and getting back again means that you get back to b1 block and start observing your imagination from the b1 block so as you become observant and you do not get drifted by your own thoughts then you are able to observe the thought as if a kind of film is going on okay then you are able to observe the thought as if you are sitting by the side of a stream and you are able to observe the stream without uh, stepping into it in a similar manner you can observe your imagination your thoughts the moment you step into the stream you become a part of the stream and then you get engrossed and then you get caught up in your own imagination so that is not what is required to be done essentially we are able to observe the imagination that is block b2 from block b1 the dimension of knowing so if you get involved in your own imagination then you are not able to observe your imagination you get drifted away with this so just observe your imagination as if a stream is flowing in front of you and you are observing it and how does it happen so let's say you are imagining about your home okay then from there you are imagining about some family member and then from there some incident now if you are not able to observe the imagination being away from the imagination so you become part of it let's say some incident uh, happened and you feel like, felt excited some incident took place in the family and you felt excited about it and then you start enjoying the celebration that you made some time earlier not being aware that you have to observe it and this may happen at times quite a number of times if you observe in a day we might be drifted away by your imagination and we may be carried away with it without being observant of what is happening inside and we may keep on feeling happy or unhappy about it so getting back essentially means coming back to the dimension of knowing that is block b1 and from there observe your imagination that is block b2 another observation is that at times when i am trying to see my imagination i see it for some time and then i feel as if it is blank 
So there is nothing there. So how do I resolve myself? So you'll see that as stated earlier, imagination is going on in the B2 block while the observation is from the B1 block. If B1 is not fully activated and you are not aware and observing from B1, it may appear as if there is nothing, no imagination. This is one possibility. Another possibility is that when you are observing your imagination, you find that there is something in your imagination and it is disturbing to you and without realizing you stop observing the imagination and then go blank. So what you have to do is just be aware and observe the imagination from the B1 block without evaluating, changing or stopping it. So since we are not able to awaken to the higher activities of the self, so generally we get engrossed with the imagination, we start flowing with it and we are not able to make out as if it is going on or not because we become a part of it. So this is one possibility. The second possibility is that in your imagination, you are getting some feeling or thought which is quite disturbing and you try to get away from there. And then also it appears as if it is something blank. Nothing is visible there. There could be some other possibility also, but ultimately you have to find out for yourself. The core issue is that if you are able to see that observing your imagination is important because that is going to decide your happiness or unhappiness, you are able to assign that priority to your imagination and then you are able to observe it. You are able to observe your feeling, your thought, isn't it? So summing up the whole thing, we like shared some of the observations, doubts, questions that were raised while observing your imagination at step one. So summarily, if you see, so I'm observing my imagination at this moment. I'm observing my desire, that is my feeling, thought and expectation at this moment. In particular, I'm trying to observe my feeling. So observe your feeling going on at this moment of time, just as it is, without evaluating it, reacting to it, without trying to change it or modify it or stop it. If your attention gets drifted elsewhere, no need to get upset. Just note that you have drifted and keep with your decision that you have to observe your imagination and you'll find that your attention will be back naturally to your imagination after some time and without any effort to forcefully trying to get it back. So this was all that we wanted to convey in step one of exercise one. So essentially you have to observe your imagination. If you're not able to observe your imagination completely, then observe your thought. If you're not able to observe the thought even, then try to find out the object of attention. Note it down in a journal. Look at the linkages between two dots that you could mark on your journal and try to see what was the thought there, what was the feeling there. And gradually you will develop the competence when you are able to observe your feeling, your thought, your expectation at the same time. Isn't it? And gradually then you are progressing to becoming an observer from block B1. So there's an assignment here for step one. So observe your imagination. Try to do this all the time, every moment. Then for how long does your attention stay on your imagination? Can you evaluate it? Does your imagination stay on one topic or does it keep shifting from one topic to another? If your attention goes somewhere else, where does it go? What do you pay attention to? Did you decide the object of attention yourself with awareness or does it seem to be happening by itself without your awareness? Try and observe the desire, your thought, your expectation separately in your imagination. So you have one whole week to keep on practicing this, practice this and then see how do you observe for yourself. Every day you can take out some time, maybe half an hour, one hour, even two hours to practice this. The more you are able to see the importance of observing your imagination, the more uh, sincerely you are able to do this. And then you can make out the responses to all these questions for how long could you pay attention? Okay, does it stay on one topic or keep on shifting? So you'll find that the more you resolved you are, the shifting gets down, it comes, it becomes low. Then also you can find out what are your concerns, your attention keeps on migrating, right? And finally, you have to observe your feeling because your feelings are guiding your thoughts and they are guiding your expectations and the expectation is now guiding your behavior and work. So your feeling part is very important. Okay. So it may be the case that in one week we are not able to do this, but just try to see that this is something very important to you. So note down your observations in a journal several times in the course of the day, say at least every four hours. So maybe you can start by 
taking out 15 minutes of time every four hours. Observe it, note down in a general, analyze it. Okay, then again observe it. And, and then you see how your competence gets developed to observe yourself very precisely. So today we have discussed the step one of exercise one. And we also discussed some of the common observations or doubts that were raised while doing step one. And we tried to resolve them. So now the responsibility is yours. You have to uh, go through this step one. You have to practice it. So next week when we discuss step two, do some practice here and then we'll discuss the rest of the steps. So do make a journal, do start noting your observation while observing your thoughts, your imaginations, and then try to observe a feeling. I hope in the next one week, you are more observant of your feeling as you are today. So I hope in the next one week, you are going to be sharper in observing your own imagination, your own feeling. Thank you.